So I'm interested in modeling the velocity of an asteroid as it is entering the atmosphere. So this is the atmosphere right over here, just drawing some random, random air particles. So we want to figure out velocity as a function of as a function of time. And we're given a differential equation to help us model this. We're told that the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is equal to a proportionality constant times 3v plus 10. And so we're actually going to solve this differential equation, use some actual uh, data uh, at velocities at particular time to figure, out, to figure out the particular solution, to figure out the exact v of t. But before we even do that, what, do we, what can we intuit about what the value of k is going to be? Well, v of t is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. v of t is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. This has some positive velocity. It's just going to slow down and eventually come to, come to stop, assuming that it doesn't get disintegrated by the atmosphere. So if this is always going to be positive, what do we know, have to know about k? Well, we're clearly slowing down. This thing is going to, be, this is going to need to be negative. And so if this is going to be negative, and we know that this thing is over here is going to be positive, then we know k is going, should be negative. So let's just, can, let's just keep that in the back of our minds as we try to solve for the particular solution. Now to solve for the particular solution, we need some data points. And we are given them. We are told that the velocity at time zero is, in th is 30 kilometers per second. So we're going to do everything in terms of kilometers and seconds. And our velocity at time equal four, or our velocity after four seconds, four seconds after entering the atmosphere, is 20 kilometers per second, which is in line with our intuition that we should be slowing down as time goes, as time goes by, as this asteroid has to go through all of the friction. Now given the data that I've just given you, what I encourage you to try to do before I do it is pause the video and try to find for the particular, try to solve for the particular V of t. And if you need, if the numbers get a little bit hairy, try to round them to the nearest thousandth. So I'm assuming you've had a go at it. So let's see if we can solve this differential equation. So the easiest thing to start off with is, well, let's just multiply both sides of this by dt. If I do that, then this dt is going to disappear. And it's going to show up on the right-hand side. And then we could divide both sides by 3v plus 10. And if I do that, that thing, so that thing is going to show up. So I just divided both sides by 3v plus 10 and multiplied both sides, multiplied both sides by dt, by dt. So let me cut and paste that. So I've just rearranged the terms, a little bit of algebraic manipulation. And now I can integrate this. It's clearly a separable differential equation. I was able to get all of the v's on one side, and I just left the constant on the right-hand side. And so what we can now do is integrate both sides of this differential equation. So now I'm going to just diff integrate both sides. Now what is the left-hand side going to be? Well, I have 3v plus 10. Its derivative is 3. So if I wanted a 3 up here, I would have to put a 1 third over here if I don't want to change the value of, this, of the left-hand side. And now I have something and its derivative. So I'm kind of un, I, I'm essentially going to be doing u substitution, although I'm not going to go explicitly through all the steps. You could set th u is equal to 3v plus 10, then du is going to be 3, 3v, and so you can essentially integrate with respect to u right over here, and so you're going to get one third, one third times the natural log of and it would be the absolute value of 3v plus 10, but we're assuming that v of t is greater than or equal to 0. So this thing is always going to be positive. So I could say the natural log of 3v plus 10 is equal to, the antiderivative of this is just going to be, and actually even on the left-hand side, I could have a constant. So let's just call that c1. And then on the right-hand side, if I, when I integrate, I'm going to get k times t, k times t, plus maybe some other constant. And we've seen this show before. Well, let's see, maybe I can subtract c1 from both sides, in which case uh, this is going to disappear. And then c2 minus c1, let's just call that c3. So that'll just be some other constant. As you can see, I'm just doing kind of constant manipulation. And let's see, I can multiply both sides by 3. 
And then I'll have the natural log of 3v plus 10 is equal to 3kt. And then let's see, 3 times c3, let's just call that c4. C4. This is 3. I just multiplied 3 times both sides, but it's just going to be another constant here. And now let's see, natural log of 3v plus 10. If these two things are equal to each other, then I then e to raise to each of those powers should be equal to each other. And so on the left hand side, I'm going to have 3v plus 10. And on the right hand side, I'm going to have e to the 3kt plus c4, which is the same thing, which is equal to the exact same thing as e to the 3kt, and we've done this multiple times before, e to the 3kt times e to the c4, c4. Well, let's just call this thing right over here c5, another constant. This is just, it's e raised to some arbitrary constant, so let's call that another constant. So it's going to be c5 times e to the 3kt. e to the 3kt, 3kt. Now I can subtract 10 from both sides, so I'll get 3v plus 10 is equal to all of, oh, not 3v plus 10, 3v is equal to all of this. So let me copy. So it's equal to that minus 10. It's equal to that minus 10. Someone's hammering outside. I hope you can't hear it, or at least I guess I hope it doesn't distract me too much as I'm trying to power through this. And let's see, now I can divide both sides by 3. I can divide everything by 3. And I'm going to get v is equal to, well, let's just call c5 divided by 3. Let's just call that c. v is equal to c e e to the 3kt. 3, I don't even make k in a separate color because we're going to have to figure out what k is. 3kt minus 10 over 3. And now we can leverage we can leverage some of these this the, these data points we have to solve for c and k. So let's do that. So the first one is v of zero. V of zero they're telling us is equal to thirty, and that's going to be equal to when v uh, when v is e when <laughs> when t is equal to zero e to the three three k t is just going to be one. So it's going to be c minus ten thirds. C minus ten thirds. Minus 10 over 3. Let's see, 30 is the same thing as 90 over 3. If you add 10 over 3 to both sides, you're going to get c is equal to 100 over 3. c is equal to 100, 100 over 3. And now we just need to solve for k. And to solve for k, we can leverage this data point that the velocity at time equals 4 seconds is equal to 20 kilometers per second. So we can say, we can say that 20 kilometers per second is equal to c, which is we now know is equal to 100 over 3, is equal to 100 over 3, e, e to the, let me do this, e to the 3kt, e to the 3, 3 times k times, well, t now is 4 seconds, so I should just write this as 12k. 3 times k times 4 is going to be 12 k minus 10 over 3. Minus 10 over 3. And so let's see, 20, we're going to have to do a little bit of fractions over here. Actually, why don't I just multiply everything times 3? So I'm going to get, I'm going to get 60. And I'll just switch to one neutral color right now, just so that we can ease the amount of time switching colors. So it's going to be 60 is equal to 100 e to the 12k minus 10. I can add 10 to both sides. I get 70 is equal to 100 e to the 12k. And now I can divide both sides by 100. And I'm going to get 7 tenths is equal to e to the 12k. I can take the natural log of both sides. So I get the natural log of 7 tenths is equal to 12k. And then I get, I get k is equal to the natural log of 7 over 10 divided by 12. And we already see this is going to be a negative value. This thing right over here is less than e, so you're going to have to raise e to a negative exponent to get to it. And so this is going to be a negative value. And let's figure out what that is. I'm going to get my calculator out for this part. So let's see, we have, we have the natural log of 7 tenths, or I could say, let me just, actually let me just, it's 0.7. 
And then I want to divide that by 12. Divide it by 12 is equal to negative 0.0, and I said around to the nearest thousand. So it's point zero three is zero. So let me let me take that off my screen and now let me just write it down. So k is and I, since I'm rounding, let me just say approximately equal to approximately equal to I already lost my approximately equal to negative negative this thing's acting funny. Negative zero point zero two nine seven or I could say zero three zero if I were to round to the nearest thousandth. And so now we can write our particular solution to model the asteroid as it's entering Earth's atmosphere. Our velocity as a function of t is going to be equal to 100 over 3. 100 over 3. And I guess in the spirit of rounding everything to the nearest thousandth, I could write that as 33.333 e, e to the 3 times kt. Actually, let me just do that. Let me just multiply. Let me just multiply. So 3 times k. So times 3. Let me round that to the nearest thousandth. So it's, and actually, that makes it a little bit more accurate. If I rounded this to the nearest thousandth, I would have put 0 0.90. But then this to the nearest thousandth is 0, or it's, it, well, it would, it, this, this would have been 0 0.090 if I multiplied by 3. But this is 0 0.089 rounded to the nearest thousandth. So let me write that. To the negative, so this part right over here is the negative 0 0.089 t, t. And then once again, in the spirit of rounding, since I'm rounding this, I might as well just round everything, although this is kind of a more, uh, this is the, ex the exact constant. So minus 3.3. Three, three. If I wanted to round everything to the nearest thousandth, and we are done.